Hello, Internet! I'm Amsterdam Bomb, and you are back for the final episode of an amazing series of going through all of the TFG Pokemon Groundbreaker figures. And I can't even believe we got to this point, and honestly, it would not have happened without the seller of uh, Cellular Plus One, I believe his name is, on eBay. I'm going to leave a link down in the description to the rest of his stuff. He's got a bunch more of these Groundbreaker figures that he is actually selling right now still, so if you want to take a look and find some for yourself, go ahead and uh, take a look down in the description. But before we get too much into that, let's take a look at the final four figures that I've got that completes my Groundbreaker collection. Oh, of course, like I said before last time, all four of the figures have their original sticker bases and are in like a pristine condition from the factory directly because that seller actually used to work uh, in association with that factory. I believe he uh, drove the trucks and he ended up getting a uh, couple sets, two complete sets for his own uh, to disperse and sell as he wished. So he decided to start doing it right now, which is awesome. So it helped me finish up my collection and hopefully it'll help you finish up some of yours. So the first one we get to look at today is Zatu. Zatu is an amazing figure. I really I really enjoy this one because they really captured that totem pole look with him, uh, especially with how he poses. He kind of does that in the game anyway, um, but choosing to put the, um, those, I don't know what you call those things, that, those ribbons that come off of his head on either side of the wing, just to add a little bit more flair and dimension to him so it didn't feel like a boring figure for someone who might have gotten him. Uh, in the actual packs or the game, though he's very colorful, he looks really awesome. I really enjoy this figure. Um, it it really really feels I don't know. It puts off that uh, that mysterious vibe that I just really enjoy. That I've never really seen so much. Um, I don't know. Now that I think about it, I haven't really seen like any Zatu or even Natu like um, you know paraphernalia merchandise and stuff like that. So. Maybe this is actually some of the grails um, that some people are actually looking for for their collections. So if that's the case, man, this is a really, really incredible Zatu figure for that. Kind of like the also eyes that are like hidden on his chest too. Zatu's a really cool, really, really cool Pokemon. So since we have the opportunity, we might as well take a look at what this figure was actually supposed to be doing for the game. So as we can see right now, he had one movement point, so he was a really slow going guy, so he probably had some really awesome attacks going for him. Little bit of miss region, and we see a little bit of miss over there as well. Uh, and combining that area is Psychic for 60, which is a, fair to say that's a safe amount of damage. I say 50 is usually enough to where you're like, um, yeah, okay, you probably will survive. 60 is a little bit better than that, so 60 is actually pretty good. Um, and Teleport is down here, which is actually a 3-star purple ability, so this is a really good one, takes priority. Zatu moves exactly two spaces, ignore blocking Pokemon. That's actually an incredible ability, because you really could try and rush uh, with a Zatu, get into as many fights as possible, and just jump past people. The only problem with that is, obviously, Zatu cannot block, and if anything, he is practically invisible. He will just... He, he has a chance of knocking you out. I mean, don't put that behind him. But actually, you have to, because that's the only way to get it. Oh, but anyway, um, you really could just, like, jump straight through people. But the thing is, exactly two spaces and a one movement point makes this kind of quirky and uh, difficult to work with. And I can kind of see it accidentally ruining people for the game if they were seriously going to play this. Assuming they would, because no one's seriously, you know, going to buy the uh, sticker-based version of these things anymore to actually play the game, right? Is anyone, is anyone out there really doing that? I don't know. Maybe you guys are. And now, here we go, the final actual Pokemon of the entire Groundbreaker set, the Zubat. This is so incredible to get one of these guys because I've heard so many horrible stories of people trying to hunt down a Zubat for the final figure of their collection and they were so disappointed because they just couldn't do it because of this obvious little clear stick thing that connects him to his base broke all the time. As well as uh, his little legs, things were just breaking all the time. Probably the most fragile of all of the TFG figures. I would not be surprised if he breaks the most, or he would have broken the most, is what I was going to say, because he obviously never got released. So we only have some of the smaller uh, figures that go along with this. Another problem with him is um, he doesn't his uh, black part of the base down here doesn't take up the full ring, while well, as opposed to say the Zatu, who definitely does. Now. The issue that that poses is he's got a lot less, um, he's not so sturdy, so as it was probably clunking around in packaging, he would probably break quite a bit, assuming he even made it a packaging, because I don't even think they made a single randomized pack of Groundbreakers uh, figures that were even going to be released. 
So taking down a look down here at the bottom, we have a three movement pointer once again. So that's actually really, really fast. So that's great. He has uh, this pretty large area here for leech life that does 20. So that's not safe at all. You're pretty much giving it up as a mist, which is another big chunk of mist area over here. You shouldn't really expect too much power out of these uh, three movement pointers, though. So that's basically what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be speed demons avoiding fights. Air Cutter 40, that's um, decent. It's not very good. That's actually, it's still pretty weak, but that's kind of expected. And he's got a very large purple area over here, which is Supersonic 2-star. The defending Pokemon is confused, which actually may play to his advantage, because assuming if Zubat was able to get a Pokemon confused and then hit them with an Air Cutter or a Leech Life, they may actually spin, because if you were confused in uh, Groundbreakers, I believe that means you then, after spinning your figure, would stop and then spin either once to the right or left, which in this case would have landed me on Miss, or Air Cutter, as opposed to getting my much more likely very good Supersonic. So, it typically lands you on uh, the more unfortunate um, options, or maybe the very, very hard to get very good one. So, it can go either way could turn against him, but either way, that is basically it for the Zubat. I really enjoyed this one in particular, like I said, because of how rare and how fragile he is, and uh, that now I'm kind of thinking about splicing up some of my uh, TFG figures and uh, posing them as different groups, say, you know, like gym leaders, but I was actually going to say, um, like, uh, Pokemon that go together in different types, or, you know, maybe even in dex number order. I don't know. I've got a bunch of ideas, like legendaries of different generations and stuff like that. But, gym leaders, oh my gosh, guys. I am probably the most excited um, about getting these two final figures, probably than any other Groundbreaker figure I've ever gotten, or even, in that case, any TFG figure I've ever gotten. I'm so insanely excited and grateful that I was able to come across these figures with their bases. It is, it is unbelievable that these things are even still out there. Crazy. We get to look at a Koga today. This is a crazy, crazy figure. And I was actually thinking earlier what I was going to say about the groups. I really kind of want to pose, because I've, I've seen somebody do it online. I don't remember. I can't quite, you know, quote and say who it was. I don't remember. But somebody was posing, like, the gym leaders with um, corresponding Pokemon that they would have used. Like, you know, Zubat, or in this case, Sabrina, and a Zatu. Though uh, she probably wouldn't use a Zatu. But, you know, type-wise, you get the idea. So... Pretty amazing. I, I really enjoy his pose as well. The poses just were never dull with the uh, TFG figure series. They're they're always interesting. He uh, does have one eye that is open there, as you see. Um, his hands are in both poses where he's like folding his uh, pinky and ring finger under, and he's doing some ninja pointy thing with both directions. There's probably a word for it, but I don't know. His scarf is, of course, flying in the wind, and he's standing very much upright about the battle. It's it's awesome. Really enjoyed this one. Um, the success rings, of course, down below, as we see what um, all of the TFG gym leaders had, um, had this very strange ring of blue. And I still, honestly, for the life of me, have no idea what that means, because um, before this video, I even lined up all of my gym leaders in uh, order that you would have fought them in the game or even found them in the TFG, and the blue rings are still seemingly random. Like, they don't progressively become more and more frequent or less and less. I don't understand it at all. If any of you guys have any idea what you think that used to mean, or uh, what the order of those things might be, let me know down in the comments, and I uh, would like, like to discuss it, because I'm seriously, I'm really baffled about those things. So, um, with Koga out of the way, we can now take a look at the final figure of Pokemon Groundbreakers, which is actually, I, did, I was kind of unintentional, but I'm super glad that it actually just ended on Sabrina. Probably the fan favorite of all of the TFG figures, the most requested, the most hunted down figure of the entire series, is this one that I am holding right here, and it is in an unbelievable condition, unfreaking believable condition it is. The hair is even moved up so it can actually spin very nicely, though it probably is one of the very few Sabrinas that is on its original base that is actually spun for anybody. So there you go. You're blessed, guys. Have a nice day. <laughs> this is an incredibly painted figure. It is so detailed as well. It is fabulous how well they ended up making these figures. This is one of the most valuable figures of the set. A lot of these figures that I've been showing you recently, people just can't even find at all. This one, if you can even find it, it's basically whatever the seller wants to ask for it because there's so few of them 
I mean, how do you price it? I mean, the seller just kind of asks for whatever they want. And uh, sometimes it's, you know, only a few hundred dollars. Sometimes they're insane and they ask for something absurd. And, you know, buyers will either pay for it or say, you know what? I'm not paying that much for a Pokemon figure that's that tall and above a semi-obscure gym leader. But the thing is, this is really, you know, the only Sabrina figure you can get. That's I'm pretty sure that's the only figure of Koga you can get until they keep making more of those. Um, they are making some new sculptures of uh, some of the gym leaders from the Kanto set, and they're actually pretty cool looking. I've seen a Brock and Misty. They look pretty nice. But the thing is, Groundbreakers are just totally different. These figures are just completely unbelievable jaw-droppingly unbelievable. I can't believe that they canceled the TFG. I really wish that uh, it never canceled. Like, I'm sure all you guys do as well as you're watching this out there, and you're all probably just as sad as me that we actually, or maybe excited, that we just reached the end of Groundbreakers, and there's really no more after this to do. Though I am thinking about doing other series where I randomly go through different figures in my collection and have, like, a, uh, a figure of the week that we could just, you know, take a look at individually, because all these so far I've been collecting them together and showing you guys in groups to try and chuck it out. If you guys were curious about where that success blue ring landed right down there, it's about in, uh, in the middle of the word success, so kind of weird. Like I said, I have no idea um, how it is working like that, but it is indeed. If you guys didn't believe me, yep, that totally says Sabrina of the Groundbreaker set down there at the bottom. Same for all the rest of these. This is going to say Koga, Zubat, Yep, it is completely unbelievable, and like I was saying before, and many times I'm sure I've said it, uh, that seller, I'm going to leave a link down in the description if you guys are interested in any of his stuff, go take a look, check it out, and uh, I will see you guys hopefully in a lot more TFG videos, I am not planning on stopping after this, I know it's been requested, people also want to see uh, TFG games being played, I am still planning on doing that, it's, there's just been a lot going on right now, I've not been able to do it. And uh, we'll see what other stuff is going to be coming out in the future. Like I said, I've got a bunch of other ideas. So until then, thank you all so much for watching. Remember to like the videos and subscribe for more. And I will see you all in the next Pokemon TFG video. See you.